Hey guys, I know that you love when I talk instead of playing. Ma che cazzo stai a dire? So smash that like button now! Oh. Now that you know why I'm not playing this week, let's have a look at this material that I have here on the table. This is all my Purcell material. All of you know how much I love uh, Harry's, Harry Purcell's music and uh, there's quite uh, a bit of it in the channel. If you haven't listened to it, go and have a listen. So let's start uh, just having a look at this stuff. So here, the most important which for me, which are the keyboard works by Henry Purcell in this early 20th century edition, which I found once, all four volumes, in a second-hand music shop in, in London, quite an amazing place. You go to the second-hand bookshop and then you go to the lower level and it's basically bursting with the scores everywhere and you can always find nice things there so for sale harpsichord works then we have the british library journal volume 21 number 2 from 1995 which features purcell in the cover and in particular it talks about amongst other things this uh, manuscript containing uh, scores in the hand of Henry Purcell and his contemporary uh, Giovanni Battista Draghi it's uh, there's some pictures here like this one for example I don't know if you can see and uh, from this manuscript actually there is an article in this other magazine, De Clavicordio number 11, in which Christopher Hogwood puts basically uh, a modern transcription of a prelude, you can see here, that's contained in that manuscript found um, in the other magazine. So this prelude, you can listen to it. Uh, played on the clavichord by myself in the link that I'll put up here I used it as a prelude for a Buxtehude suite in C major let's have a look at some books now the first two books I have here are not by about Purcell but they are about the context in which Purcell lived uh, and played and composed his music one is about Restoration London, very interesting, easy read. And the other one is uh, Music in Purcells London. Yeah, I haven't finished reading this, just the first couple of chapters. It was also quite interesting. The other book I have here is a big one. It's uh, Charles Burney's General History of Music, the second volume which starts from the 16th century onwards uh, until his time, which is the late 18th century. I talked about uh, Charles Burney in another uh, video and I put the link here also for you. So in this uh, book, when he talks about Purcell, he actually dedicates quite a few pages to Henry and uh, is full of praise for the man. Uh, he obviously appreciated and loved Henry Purcell a lot. Let's leave these two for later. Now I will show you my vinyl records with music by Purcell. My CD player has been broken for a long time and so when I still lived in London I started going to uh, second-hand shops and charity shops uh, looking for vinyl records because I restored a vinyl record player and um, Yes, and you could find a lot of good, good vinyl records for a very little money. You're talking about sometimes one or two pounds, sometimes a bit more, of course. So let's have a look at them. So this one, it's um, one I, I, I like a lot. It's Purcell, as you can see here. Fantasia for Viols. So this is Purcell basically writing music in a style that was a little bit older than him 
uh, and it, this is played by the London Baroque and it was recorded in 1983 at the Temple Church in London there is a picture here in the back I don't know if you can see so Fantasias for Vios very nice stuff if you have the chance to look for it on YouTube then we have this other record here the Academy of Ancient Music three elegies and music for strings there we go this one I like very much there is uh, Christopher Hogwood playing uh, an organ uh, and that organ sound just adds something quite magical to the pieces played in this record then you have two records here with the uh, songs so this one is poor cell songs and dialogues uh, the singer here is Emma Kirkby and she and also that uh, she's a soprano and there is David Thomas a bass and uh, accom accompanied uh, by a lute player very nice just voice and lute and then we have here another singer Kevin Smith accompanied by a harpsichord player and there is some harpsichord suites here as well in this other record then of course it couldn't uh, I miss this one is the complete harpsichord works by Robert Woolley then we have uh, another good one here this is a uh, Trevor Pinnock playing uh, different music from different uh, composers including of course Purcell what does he play in this one of Purcell he plays some short pieces and the sweet in G minor then there is also other interesting music here of some composers that I have featured in the channel you have Matthew Locke or Locke however you pronounce it and uh, Thomas Arne as well Trevor Pinnock on the harpsichord then I have a few other records that uh, one is Dido and Aeneas which is an opera and then you have this one is Purcell with uh, Luli on the other side and these are all music that involve ensembles and singing and then sacred music at the English court is another one then we have uh, theater music some music that Purcell composed for the theater then count counter tenor duets by Purcell and Blow, John Blow and uh, here a very nice one another one this is actually a very good record very good very well made um, old on San Cecilia's day there we go so these are all my Purcell records I have to say I do go back to them quite often to conclude the video I left these two books here so let's have a look at them this one is uh, Roger North on music so this book I found it in a bookshop near Charing Cross in London that if you happen to be in London uh, I recommend you go there it specializes in books on music and also there is sheet music there and uh, that shop is amazing they will have even very old uh, editions of books for example Charles Burney one of his books they had the first edition so we're talking about an 18th century and of course I didn't buy it because it's more like a collector's item but they did show me the first edition printed in the 18th century which is quite an amazing thing to see in excellent condition by the way so let's uh, talk about this one Roger North was a friend of Purcell he played the viol and uh, his brother Francis North also played music and he's a direct uh, witness of uh, music and things on music at the time of Purcell in particular he describes an episode where he meets uh, in an afternoon at his brother's house I think um, with Purcell so Roger North uh, his brother Francis North and Henry Purcell 
to play the trio sonatas, so the sonatas in three parts by Purcell, and he also says that Purcell seems seem to have been quite pleased uh, about what they achieved in that afternoon. And this pretty much is the only direct uh, account, uh, as far as uh, I know, of uh, of Purcell, of picturing Purcell in a in a daily in a daily task of making music. So it's quite a I, f to me to read that was quite a, actually a powerful image that came to my mind. So Roger North on music. The reading sometimes can get quite difficult because you are reading in English from the time, but it's worth uh, challenging your brains and uh, getting into this. This is a biography of Purcell written by Jonathan Keats. Um, it's a very interesting book. There is a lot of. Uh, information that I hadn't read elsewhere. When it talks about, uh, describes the music in words, I find a little bit difficult to follow. I prefer much more to put a record on and actually listen to the music directly. But there is a lot of interesting information and I would like to share with you apparently the only words uh, of Henry Purcell that have come to us, uh, the only words so to say, that have come directly from his mouth, that have come to us in written form, of course. And these words refer to a rehearsal where for, for the theater, yes, for the theater, it says here, and there was uh, this singer, a very young singer, Jenny, the boy, <laughs> and one of the musicians of the, that, that was there, basically, he, wa he called uh, Jemmy the boy and was trying to tell him uh, how to sing in a certain part of the music, how to, to grace and run a division in such a place, apparently. So, and here we go, uh, the, the only words of Purcell that have come to us and apparently uh, in that situation, I'm gonna read from the book now, Purcell himself intervened, saying, Oh! Let him alone, he will grace it more naturally than you, or I can teach him. The author then adds, These words certainly bear witness to a mixture of humanity, professionalism, true aesthetic judgment, and pure common sense, which were surely typical of both man and artist, Henry Purcell. I hope you enjoyed this improvised uh, presentation of this Purcell material. If you did, hit the like, 